Welcome back to another episode of the Endless Silence podcast, where we share the real, raw, and authentic experiences of nurses across our great nation and beyond. My guest today is Sarah Shujin, who's been a nurse since 2004, has been working in a nursing home for the greater part of her career. In 2017, she was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, which was the catalyst for her life-changing actions. Through natural healing, she was able to get completely clean, lost 60 pounds, and healed herself from most of her fibromyalgia. Her transformation was so incredible that she decided to give back and become a facilitator to survivors. Sarah was fired from both her nursing jobs, her license is under investigation, and she has been defamed by the media for speaking out against the lockdowns. She is now the co-founder of the Canadian Frontline Nurses, an organization aimed at uniting nurses, educating the public, and bringing ethics back into healthcare. She is also the founder of Lighting Up Dark Corners. Sarah is on a mission to empower people to explore the root cause of their mental health challenges and discover natural Ways, ways to heal instead of numbing with toxic prescriptions. Me and you both, sister. I'm, I'm on that same path and I'm so happy to have you here, Sarah. I know we're going to get into some juicy stuff and so I want to invite you just to kick us off with your nursing in real life moment to share with our, our listeners. Well, thank you so much for having me. I think for me, the real, the big thing, message, juicy message about nursing is that we all get into nursing because we care about people and we want to make sure they get better. But unfortunately, it seems like we're just tools in the system that is actually harming people. And so that's actually why I was able to speak out because I was already aware of that. And I already was trying to get out because I had healed myself. And I want to help people go to the root cause of their problems and actually, you know, be healthy, like real health, teach people how to empower people, how to become healthy. And so, yeah, I think that's a big problem in the nursing industry right now. I think that nurses, we need to like get nurses educated on that fact and, and help them see it. Right. Because it's, it's really sad. You want to help people and you're actually harming them. Like I was very upset when I found that out. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, I do know so much, and I I feel like that's a you know a common story amongst nurses or even other people who get out of their field is that they go through their own personal experience, right? Something happens in their life, and then they start to see things in a different way. They explore different options, and we start to you know if we particularly look at nursing, is we start to see that what we're doing in our system is only just it's just one small piece, right? Like, and, and you're right in, in the grand scheme of it, when we're not really helping people get to the root cause, or we're not really helping people to, to see them in a holistic way, then we are essentially harming them. And that that's a difficult thing to face for sure. That's that like huge moral injury that we are seeing, oh, like across the board. I mean, I see it everywhere. And it was my experience too. And then we go on our own journey and we do our own healing. And we discover all of these things that were like, why was I not told this? Why was I not taught this? And then it gives these huge like ah ahas and then we go back into the system we're like whoa no no this this doesn't work yeah tell me a little bit more about that actually because this is like it's it's so much my story too and I just love to hear a little bit more about how that like how that confronted you when you started your own journey of healing well for me it was because I actually find it's it's funny how it's like a, a blessing in disguise because I was like so sick It came to the point where I couldn't get out of bed. Holding up my arm was exhausting. I would wake up in the morning and couldn't get out of bed. I was so stiff that I couldn't move for the first 10 minutes. And I could feel every little part of my body that I didn't even know I had. And I had a lot of nerve pain and so, and so many other symptoms like sciatic nerve. They thought I had rheumatoid arthritis. They thought I had endometriosis. I had IBS. I was blanking out. I was losing balance. Like I thought I had bugs crawling on my skin. There was so, and it just kept getting worse and worse and worse. And I did a lot of tests and the doctors were like, well, maybe this is all in your head. That just made me like lose it even more. Cause I was like, oh my God, I'm going to die before they find out what's wrong with me. And so I decided to take my health in my own hands and do some research while they were trying to figure out what was wrong with me. And I found out about fibromyalgia. And for those who don't know what fibromyalgia is, it's, well, they say it's a long-term disability and there's no cure for it or really, and they don't really know what it's about, but reading about it and doing some research, I found out that it's about toxicity and toxicity could be like stress, you know, trauma, unresolved trauma, 
or, or also food, you know, the air, water, what's in our water, medications, all these things that we do that we take in that are not, that we're not supposed to take in. And so when I was finally diagnosed, the doctors wanted to give me five pills, you know, the band-aid pills for the, for the symptoms I had. And I working in a nursing home knew about those medications and they wanted to give me sleeping pills, like really bad stuff, sleeping pills, codics for pain, all addictive stuff, which I struggled with addiction already. And so I refused and I was like, you guys don't know what you're doing. And I decided to get help because I really needed it anyways. And I decided to do group therapy. And I went to a place called the Gatehouse here in Toronto. It's a safe place for adult survivors of sexual abuse. And there I learned about complex post-traumatic stress disorder, which in my opinion is just another or label, but it actually made me understand that everything that I've gone through is actually super normal. And so I was able to, and also being in a group setting, I realized that, you know, a lot of people had the same issues as, so it really helped me with like self-acceptance. And so I was able to like get sober. And then, like I said, like you said, in the intro, I lost 60 pounds. I did so great. I changed my whole life. I started eating organic food, taking real good supplements. I switched like drinking and smoking for going to the gym. And then when I finished the programs, I loved it so much that I became a facilitator there and and then becoming a facilitator there, I found out that, hey, a lot of people have with trauma have somatic illnesses like fibromyalgia. And so I started helping them and they were getting better too. Oh, and by the way, I completely had gotten rid of the fibromyalgia, the so-called long-term disability. So that's kind of how I started looking at the industry, like, what are they doing? And from there, because I was so health conscious, I was like, why, why are my residents eating this? Why am I giving them this medication? Like nothing made sense anymore. So that's how it started for me. Mm -hmm. oh, and I'm just like pinging as you're talking because my, I mean, my story is like, it's not the same, but it's, but it feels so similar because, you know, even my own healing journey, like I, I was first, mine was depression that I have experienced through most of my life. And, and the label of depression is probably just as toxic to, to us. And, and the fact that I was never really treated, you know, I was given medications and then when it wasn't getting better, they would just give me more medications or they would increase the dose. There was just, you know, maybe go see, go see a counselor like you no know, guidance around what kind of counseling I may need or like trauma and nothing like trauma was not even mentioned in my journey growing up with with mental mental illness and but what I see it as now and like when I started going into these natural healing remedies was a big part was detoxing and getting rid of the toxic products in my home looking at the food I was eating and like and inside toxic, like as far as my, my heart and the trauma and the ways that I had both personally experienced, but also, you know, we have to take into account like ancestral and collective and like just, just all of it being a, being a woman, like there's, there's so many different ties that create this heaviness inside of us. And you're right. And I had a guest before, and she spoke about like how, if you, if you don't listen to your body, your body will force you to listen to it. And that is a common story, right? And so then we start learning about natural ways to heal because the system is not giving us what we need and what we deserve really too is exactly. the big part there yeah and so you started facilitating these groups and you were helping other people heal and when abouts was that like and when did you transition into starting doing your own thing well i was facilitating at the gatehouse so this was i started facilitating i think it was september of 2018 so yeah, I didn't have much time before the pandemic hit and I started deteriorating again, mm -hmm. but yeah, 2018. And then I, I, I was do facilitating at the gatehouse and then I also started lighting up dark corners then, uh, but having a job, being a single mother of three and having two jobs, you know how it is. You kind of get stuck in the job thing and you're kind of scared to like, let go of the job and start your own thing. So I wasn't serious enough. I didn't have enough time. Uh, so it never actually took off. It's just now that, you know, I got fired. It's like, <laughs> God just made the path for me. Like, you need to get out of this. I'm getting you out. And then, so now I started lighting up dark corners and I'm running my own programs and it's going so well. I'm so excited. So yeah. 
Yeah. And the group work, I, I'm imagine, I don't know for sure, but I imagine that you're doing group work because you see the power yes. in it. Yeah. And yes. I do group work as well for the same reasons. There is something absolutely magical that happens when people get together and they share their stories and they share their truth. The, like, you know, I, I often will say like around week three, I see people, you know, sometimes earlier, but I, I start to see people really dropping their guard and like laying down their swords and they're just like, you know, their heart starts to open and there's just, it's really amazing to be the witness to it and to be facilitating it it's just like the magic of our human connection and it just it's a spark for me for sure and i'm i'm sure it is for you yeah absolutely i'm doing so much better since i'm doing this like i i forgot how important it was in my life too in my healing and my journey um, mm -hmm. And it's amazing that I get to help others along the way. So yeah, it's, it's really empowering. Uh, so maybe tell us a little bit more about, you know, we've, we've kind of, we right away dove into like getting the heck out of nursing, but you, but you were there for a long time too. And so I'm curious, like, as you were, you know, when you were nursing, there's a reason that we keep coming back, you know, even though so, so many of us will, will resonate with the fact that it's, it's taking more than it's giving these days, particularly. And, you know, we, we, so many people are burned out suffering with depression and anxiety and trauma and substance use and all those things that are really just symptoms of, of, of the trauma and of the fact that we are, you know, maybe not prioritizing, not valuing ourselves and, and our needs. And, but when we stay in this profession, like what were some of the, you know, maybe like some of the successes that you ex experienced as a nurse? Well, I think for me, actually going into nursing was saved my life. I was kind of lost. I think I was like 24 when I graduated. I was really lost before that. I And I got married early. My ex-husband was deported. You know, he was abusive. He wanted me to be an accountant. So I went to in accounting, actually, New York University, and I did so bad because I learning about how society came to be was really triggering to me. I was like, what is wrong with all this system? So I kind of like failed out of it. They told me to take a year off and I ended up doing a PSW program actually, which I loved and then decided to go into nursing. For me, it was all about, I thought I was unworthy, always had the problem with not being enough, not being important and going into nursing actually brought importance to my life. It brought value because I was now helping others and I could see that I was helping them and it was succeeding. And so it put value onto me. And, and it gave me a reason to live, actually. So that was one of the big things. And I was actually really, really good at it. You know, if you talk to the teachers I had in school, they were like, we had to tell Sarah, like, no, not you. You're not doing it. Because like, I wanted to do everything. I, I was, I graduated with honors. It was the first time in my life that I actually succeeded so much at something. I, it was like, it was made for me, you know? So I really loved it. I actually got hired straight from from my clinical, my graduation clinical. So I didn't even have my license yet. I had to get a temporary one because I, I was already hired. And so I just loved it. And then I started working in the community with kids. I loved that too. So it was all to me, it was all just putting, adding value to myself. And then I ended up in nursing home because I was a single mom and I didn't have to do the shift work, but I, and I, I loved that too, it, being there to really help people pass away, especially when they didn't have families. I think that I was really privileged to have the experience to go through that with people. And it taught me a lot about life too, and how they, the regrets they had and stuff like that. I think another thing that I was really proud of was I just loved the whole nursing. It was like, so I just wanted to learn everything. I just wanted to keep learning. But I think another thing I did, which is not necessarily nursing, but I became chief steward of the union like four years before I got fired and they didn't represent me properly. But I loved being the voice of the nurses and making sure that their rights were respected. And I was the same with my residents. That was really important for me. And then the thing that I'm the most proud of as a nurse is when I spoke out. I was the first nurse to speak out at a rally across Canada. I think Kristen spoke a few. She spoke at a city hall before me, actually. But I was the first one to speak at a rally. And that was very difficult. As a single mother, I was really scared. It took me a long time to do it. But when I finally did it, I felt liberated. Honestly, it was really hard for me to stay quiet. During the first lockdowns, I could see my residents were deteriorating. You know, if they, they were, they were being honestly, like it's the last 
place for them. The only thing they have is their family. So mm -hmm. the first thing that they stopped the families from coming in, I was so upset by that. I could see, I had a resident that died within a week of a heart because of that. I, I'm sure it's because of that. People say, well, she had a bad heart. No, no. She was really like every day I had, when I came in, I had to call her daughter, know what time she was coming. And she would ask me every five minutes, like, is she here? Why is she late? Like, did, is she in an accident? Like, so you, you know, and you can see people deteriorating. Mm -hmm. uh, it help us a lot when it comes to feeding or taking care of residents. And so a lot of them had failure to thrive. And I thought that was already disgusting. But then we started having false positives where like three people, housekeepers got tested positive because we were being tested all the time and they, they weren't sick, but the whole building had to go on shutdown. And so residents had to stay in their rooms on top of it. They were already so, they had deteriorated so much. They had to stay in their room. And like people that don't stay in their room are said to have behaviors and then they're medicated and uh, they, or they take their walkers away if they're trying to walk into the, the hall. Some of them are demented too. They won't listen. And next thing you know, these people are not walking. They're sitting, they fall, they end up in bed, they have sores and they pass away. And so not speaking out about that, because I, I went to the union and they were like, Sarah, don't you care about your residents? You know, when I was like trying to say like, these are people's rights, like they're not. And so I knew I had to be quiet. And what I learned during my healing and how I healed is because I started standing in my truth. That was, that's the whole healing thing is realigning with yourself, finding your values, you know, and standing in your truth, finding your authentic self. And as soon as you start moving away from that, so like staying quiet when I knew that I had to speak up, I started deteriorating a lot. And plus the gyms were closed. I couldn't do my support group anymore. So I was starting to deteriorate. And then it came to the point where I had to speak out, but that's something I'm really proud of. And I, and I realigned with myself and I, and I always tell people when you do what's right, yes, all my fears did come true. You know, I lost my job. I was in, I'm investigated by the college. I have two investigations against me who were defamed nationally called domestic terrorists by some. There was death threats. The MP came at my door. It was horrible for, for a little bit, but then, but then all the support that came in, people started helping me financially because I single mom here, you know, things just came true. And, and now I get to do what I love to do. Like I found a way and I think people really need to trust in themselves and know that we human beings, we adapt. You can adapt. It's faith over fear and, and doors. Are, when you do what's right, opportunities open up. And mm -hmm. so I tell people like, it's time. Yeah. Oh, I just need a breath. I think just as I'm listening to you, I mean, I could, it does, it triggers so many different things. I mean, I could feel my body like, you know, tightening up as I'm listening to the stories of, of those residents and, and I'm breathing and I'm just like, okay, it's all right. Like we're here in this space. It's just, it's, you know, it's a story. This is the truth. And, and what you're sharing about, like, you know, there was so much there. I just want to kind of recap but you know initially speaking about like all the different successes you've had as a nurse and how you know really they're they're not specific to a certain job is what i kind of pulled from that it's like the, the their ways of being and you can take those ways of being and leave a certain environment that's toxic for you and use them in other ways right it's like it, it is it's aligning yourself with what is your values your passion your dharma if you will right where you're just connecting to what makes what sparks you and what brings you to life and then serving that back to the world and that is you know what what alignment feels like i mean i've felt it so many different times in my life too and it just it's it's freaking fabulous like it just you you're you're lit from the inside out and yeah. so i just you know i i think a lot of nurses you know listening you know whether they resonate with all of the pieces is is it doesn't it doesn't matter because there is heart in this story there is like there's you're a real person and you were in this environment watching these people suffering and seeing how it was happening and saying like this isn't right and then being quiet because you didn't you know because of fear because fear keeps us quiet and then coming to a place where you're like 
okay, like everything I've learned has told me that when I stand in my integrity, like I am better. When I do the healing, I am better. I am so disconnected from that right now because I'm being quiet. And as you, and you were deteriorating in your physical health and probably mental health too, I don't, you didn't say, but, and then as you pulled yourself back, as you like realign that pendulum, then all of a sudden things start to flow different. And I, you know, I think it's just such a, a global example, really, like we could apply it to so many different things of just when we, when we stray or when we betray our, our internal core values and how that impacts us. And then when we pull it back, how it just lights up and, you know, faith over fear. I just love that because it, it does take faith because when you're leaving this, you know, so-called secure profession that has literally thrown, you know, thousands of people under the bus. It's no longer secure. That foundation is pretty shaky at this point. And when, but when you're thinking about leaving what is supposed to feel secure to going into something new and to taking risk and, and just, you know, following and trusting your heart. It, it is scary because it's like, you know, all of our shit comes to the surface is what ha I always say to people like entrepreneurship is the quickest road to self healing because you, you will have to face your fears if you're going to put yourself out there to take a risk. So I just, I mean, your story is, it gave me goosebumps. And I, like I said, I was triggered, but I was also just like lit from it because it is the power of, living our lives the way we are intended to live them and you know living in that alignment or the yes life is, is another way i kind of describe it tell me you know th this question i posed to you and and you said it was an interesting one to think about but if you were to speak to your younger self so you you graduated nursing back in 2004 so and you know you nursed up until you were within the pandemic so and if you could talk to your younger version of you, what would you say to her? What would be some of your advice and, and some guidance? And I, I think this is really helpful for, for people who are just getting into it, or even as advice for people who are in it right now and struggling and suffering in, in really big ways. So what would you say to her? I think for me, it would be that you do belong, Sarah. I always felt like I didn't fit in. And even though, you know, I was really good at it and I was excited and it was actually for the first time in my life, I actually did feel like I was like good at something. And I still felt like I wasn't good enough because that's a core belief that comes from way, way far in childhood. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was always still different. You know, I still, I, I didn't think like everybody else, you know, things bothered me that wouldn't necessarily bother somebody else. So I think for me, it's, you do belong uh, the way and to accept myself the way I am. And to love that I'm different. Now I really do. I mean, as a kid, it was a big problem. Like I was a, I thought I was a boy. Like I was one, of, I had identity, gender identity issues, like big time. My mom had to call me Peter from the park. And so I always had like these issues with who I was, but, and I always wanted to fit in, but I really couldn't. Even when I tried, it was like impossible. And, and these now I'm like, thank God that I didn't fit in and, and, and that I wasn't because I was already ready to pull out. I was used to not being a part of the main group. Like I was never, I don't know how to say it, mainstream or commercial. And so it was easier for me to pull back and be like, well, you guys are not going to like me. That's fine. I kind of, I kind of actually enjoy that in a way, which is maybe not healthy neither. Cause I'm like, <laughs> oh, yeah, you know, I'm not like everybody else. Thank God I'm not average. But I guess there's nothing wrong with being average, but I'm really proud that I'm different and I'm able to stand in my integrity and my truth no matter what, because I've been through that scary place where I did, didn't fit in, right? So I, it was all, the path was all made for me. Honestly, mm -hmm. if you look at my, my whole life, like I was literally born and built to speak out. Like there was no way I wasn't going to do it. Mm -hmm. So yeah, definitely. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, I don't know if you're aware of this, but last year I published a children's book and it was called The Perfect Snowflake. And, and it's really, it's about embracing our uniqueness as our gift. And I, I my whole life, I, I felt 
similar, like unworthy, not good enough. Like I don't belong. I don't fit in. And I became a master chameleon. I could, I could fit into anything, anytime. Yeah. And I, because you, you adapt, like you said, we're very adaptable. And so we, we learn that if we can adapt and fit in, then it, then it, then we feel better, right? Then we feel like, oh, I, I, I belong here in this group, but we really don't because we're sacrificing our, who we truly are. And then we land in a place, you know, how many years later? And we're like, we don't even know who I am anymore because I've just manipulated and to try to fit into all these different boxes that the world has created. And I don't even know who I am at my core. And so really it's like the book is, is, you know, it's for kids, but the message is for everyone because it's like, we, we were the day we were born, the day we were conceived, there was a purpose for us. Like we, we fitting in is not needed. You need to be true to who you are and true to that silliness or the strangeness or the weirdness or like, you know, just all of the things that, that make you, you, if, and I'm not saying that's easy. That's the journey really is like, we, we, we journey throughout so much of our life away from it. And now it's like coming back is the healing and remembering, yes. remembering who we are and embracing that and just, and celebrating it and accepting it. And that's a, you know, it's a huge part of what I do in the work that I do with nurses. And I'm, I'm sure it's in, ingrained into what you do too, because it's part of your story. And, and it's, it's really powerful to, to hear that. And just to, you know, to have this understanding of like, if I were to talk to my younger self, I would tell her like, you know, like you already belong, like you're good enough the way you are. You don't need to change anything. Like just be you. It's, it's something I'm telling myself on, on a daily basis. I tell my kids, you know, and I think they know how to push the buttons. They're like, oh, this is one of mom's little trigger spots. So if I oh, yeah. say all these shame <laughs> words of like, oh, I'm not good enough or I suck. And then they know I'm going to get like fired up yes, and on my yes. soapbox. Right? <laughs> so, oh man. Yeah. I'm, I'm curious, like if we could go in a little bit to like the system and you know, I'll just preface it with like, when I think about the system, I get quite intimidated. Actually, I'm like, how do I how do I impact the system? Like, I, I mean, I can see the problems. I can see the fact that they're ignoring the problems and they're not creating real solutions. But I also see a lot of really good people still working in the system and suffering the 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 brunt of this abuse that is happening. And if you, you know, if you could offer like, what, what is it that you see in the, in the system wise? And like, what do you think needs to shift and change to really support the people that are, that are left there or who are choosing to stay there? And, you know, if that is their choice, I, I, I want that to be an empowered choice for them where they're saying like, this is, this is where I want to be and I'm going to fight and I'm going to do everything I can to, you know, do my own personal healing so that I don't go down with this ship that is like going going down. So that was a long winded question, but what, what do you, what do you have to say back? I think for me, unfortunately, I think the system was built. It's not broken. People say the system is broken. You know, we have to fix it. No, if you look at it well, now that I'm outside and I've met a lot of people that have been on the outside for a long time, and I get to see all the censored people and hear all the stories, there's no fixing that system. It's actually created for that, right? It's created to profit certain people and to make sure that we stay sick. So our mission is we are creating a new paradigm. I don't even want to call it a system. I know. But, yeah. but that's what it is. We're creating a new paradigm. And so our whole mission now at Canadian Frontline Nurses is to empower nurses to actually come out of this system and find their power their true passion, their purpose, and, and offer it to our communities. So we see, we were trying to get people actually out of the hospitals and these institutions that are now we're seeing more and more harmful and get back to community from birth to death. Because I don't know if you're aware of this, giving birth in the community is actually much safer than giving birth in a hospital now. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of trauma that happens when you're born in a hospital that you, you know, people carry all their lives. So, you know, trying to get people out of it that way. And also palliative, you know, it's, it's really not healthy to die in an institution surrounded by, you know, medical staff and, and all the medical things, you know, I strongly believe that people are supposed to die at home surrounded by their families, their kids, their pets, their belongings, you know, it's, it could be a celebration. It doesn't have to be dark so we really want to like get people to think that way and also and how can we do that and you know like when people are in the system in the medical system 
they're called patients. And a patient is actually a synonym of being a victim. It means that if you're a patient, you need something from outside to come and heal you. You can't do it yourself. Like you're you're powerless. And we totally don't believe that. We believe that people are active participants in their care. So we want to empower people, guide them, educate them on how to take care of themselves. And they are the ones that have to do it. They have to do the work. There's no magic potion to healing. Like you, there's something you got to, something is not aligned in your body and you need to work on it. And so we want to empower people to do that. So we have a directory. And like I said, we want to get nurses to come towards it. So the way it would be, and maybe in the future, it's going to be completely the alternative to the college, you know, because when you're tied to the college, you got to follow these rules like what you can see now. So we wouldn't have that. And when you're not attached to the college, you can't advertise yourself. So Canadian frontline nurses could be the advertisement. So we have like a directory where people can come and find our nurses, but also we're empowering them by offering them courses that will help them to find their purpose. For example, we have a patient's advocate that's created a, a course for our nurses. So some nurses might be interested in becoming patient advocates and helping patients who are in the hospital to get out and find their own way or they're having difficulties and they don't know how to send themselves. So there's some, some nurses can do that. There's some of our nurses are doing a birth companion course actually. And and I think the course started like five, six months ago. And one of our, our main East coast representative did take the course and she actually gave birth to her first birth in the community. I think it was yesterday and it went so well. So we're so excited about, so it's really about empowering people to find nurses, to find their purpose you know, we, we have discounts too, and all kinds of things. It's, it's not very expensive. It's a hundred dollars a year to be a part of the directory. And then people from the public can come. And I think for their membership, it's $50 a year and they can have access to nurses close to them, but also that think differently. You know what I mean? So for example, I put myself on the directory. I'll do one-on-ones. I'm, I'm all about mental. See, I found my purpose, for example, just to show you like how nurses can find their own thing. You know, and my purpose is I feel is to help people with their mental health, but it's to help them going to the root cause of the problem instead of taking those toxic and often lethal medications that are ravaging our society these days. Mm-hmm. And, you know, I do that by, and I, and I'm very aware, like, it's like I said, it's about empowering. So I have like these, I have a 10 week program. People are like, well, you can't heal in 10 weeks. No, it takes a lifetime to mm-hmm. heal. But this 10 week is very empowering. And it helps people who are starting their journey, who have gone through childhood trauma by giving them the tools and knowledge they need to embark on their journey. And from there on, they have the power to change themselves and keep on doing what they're doing. So we want a whole bunch, like we want nurses to empower nurses to find their purpose, find their way. And then they have the platform available to them with a lot of discounts, a lot of, a lot of education, because every two weeks we have webinars for our nurses and we have doctors that think like us or scientists or all kinds of nurses that came out and do their own thing, like the birth companion lady. So I don't know if I answered your question. No, I think you really did. Actually, it's, it is looking at, you know, it's creating the world that we want to see ourselves. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And I feel like, you know, we've, we've been talking about, well, I know I I've been talking about, but there's like the, the, the system that exists right now is like, it's, it's crumbling. It's, it's absolutely crumbling. Or I, as I said, like the ship is going down and there is this, this kind of draw for people. And from the, from the beginning, I mean, Kristen and I were talking like really early on about like independent practice for nurses and how that is a, that is a, a route that I could actually see a lot of nurses taking because they can recognize just as you were talking about, like the successes you had in your career, right. And like add advocacy and educating and like all the different pieces that we really align with we can those are those are inherent skills in us and like the parts of us that are a nurse like you can carry those into so many different things and if if the environment you're in is not supporting you although I I will say I have heard of some environments that are supportive so I don't want to like 
cancel them all out. There, there, there definitely are some, but they're few and far between because the, the, the vast majority are absolutely just toxic and are, are taking so much from these people who are giving their everything to it. Like they're sacrificing their, their entire health. They're sacrificing their families, their relationships, everything for this employer or a system that doesn't, it's not willing to give anything back. And it's, it's devastating to witness, but I think there is, you know, there's so much potential and so much hope for, for all of us, honestly, for all of us there, I I'm with you in thinking, I, I don't think there's a lot of hope for the, the system, but I know that there is hope for the individuals, like no matter what you choose, because you can be in, this is my perspective, but you can be in this current system working and not do any of the the self work and and there's a a good chance you're going to suffer because of that but if you choose to stay in it you know at the very least you owe it to yourself to do the work like to look at these things that you're talking about right like our 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 traumas and our really doing the healing which is work it's not a flick the switch. Okay. You're done. Yeah. 10 weeks you're out. Mine's 12 weeks. Like it's not, it's not like that. It's, I I kind of think of it as like setting the foundation, but it's also taking these, taking people from a place of feeling powerless to empowered. And so then they, they might go into those work environments and they might be able to create change or they might see it as like, I can't, I can't do this anymore. And I need to, I need to leave. I need to find something else because they're in this place of really owning and knowing their worth. And I think that's a part of, you know, it sounds like what you and I do is probably fairly similar. And like, and just taking people from this place of feeling really hopeless and powerless and, and realigning them, like, and not that we're doing it. I mean, we're just facilitating it They're They have to do the work. That's, you know, I, I don't, I don't ever dance around that. Like it's, it's not easy. It is, it is not easy. It's not easy for me. It's not easy for you. Like we're still doing our work. This is lifelong, yeah. but it's worth it. And then when you come to a place where you really see that worth and you can make decisions from that place, then you're, you're doing what you're talking about. Like you're pulling your life into alignment, which is where the sparks are. That's where you feel passionate. You're excited to get up and do your job in the, during the day or the night or whatever it is because it's aligned and it's, it's flow for you. So I'm sure we could like probably talk forever. There's, I know I could, but that's on a, that's even on a bad day. I could talk forever. And I, I'm, I'm actually just really curious too, like what you kind of see as, do you, do you see like the systems working alongside each other, like this new paradigm and where there's independent practice, there's people who are really getting back to this trusting is what I kind of pulled from that too. Like trusting ourselves and our bodies that we have the capacity to heal. Like we have the capacity to do these different things with support at, for sure. We're meant to do things together, but do you see like them kind of getting together, like as in, you know, emergency care, or acute care, and then having more of like the deeper, the stuff that takes a lot more time and, and, and a lot more support that we're not getting from our, our system today. What, what do you kind of, if you could project and, and say like, <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely the trauma part. Like there's things in this, the present healthcare system that are very important that are going to be necessary and not maybe not be able to bring it in the community. Like if you have a, an, an accident, right? Like surgery and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping that slowly, but surely small centers will start and, and people will have access to that through our system, like the new system. I, I'm really, I don't have any faith in this system. I believe that, you know, as someone who tried to change the system from within and I've, I wanted to be a revolutionary. It's really weird. I used to fantasize about like being a freedom fighter. I always had the shirts, the rev, you know, I always like, since I did my work, I was like, I'm a freedom fighter and this and that. I really don't believe that you can change the system from within if you try to change the system from within, you become the system. Hmm. It's very, very difficult. Like I said, it's made, it has a purpose and the people at the top, uh, you know, there's, you can do it to a certain extent, but you become, you come to a level Mm -hmm. where you can't change it. So it kind of doesn't work. So I'm hoping that the system will completely collapse, but that people will have come out that have money to invest and will have created the same kind of health that is needed and that works in the present system because for chronic illness, they're like garbage. But when it comes to acute trauma, like accidents and like, like certain surgeries and stuff like that, they're very necessary, right? Like, but I'm hoping that people will come out and and start their own centers that who think like us. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, I don't, maybe negative. I don't know, but (laughs) I don't believe in this system whatsoever. I do not like the people who created it. 
I do not like the people who run it. It's for profit. I don't believe that it could be changed. Like I said, it was built for this. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I don't yeah. believe that we can work hand in hand. Well, I, and I think, well, I think you're kind of saying yes and no, because if, if we need these like sort of, you know, trauma type of centers that, yes. that we can deal with that stuff, then we, then we do still need some elements of that. But there's oh, like, yeah. there is this, you know, as, as, it's the life and death cycle of everything and what we're seeing is like these these old systems and not just in healthcare it's in every system right they are they're they're coming into this death cycle and yes. what will come from that is like is building new and so what that looks like i mean you guys are you guys are pioneers in this in this new system or paradigm that's being built and and really looking at creating what is more aligned for us as as individuals as communities and like really pulling people together and again i really think it's like tapping into this self-trust and reminding people of how powerful we are in our own lives that we don't need to give away any of our power to anyone that you know we can support each other we can we can community wise we can come together and really integrate and 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 block Awesome and be just absolutely fulfilled in so many different ways, but then we don't have to rely on anybody else to tell us what to do, which is, I think, probably the biggest message out there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, is there anything else that you feel like you'd like to share with us? And, and of course, you know, drop like, you know, where people can find you, of course, the Canadian frontline nurses directory, but yeah, if, if there was like one last thing you'd, you feel like you'd like to share. Well, I always tell people, don't wait for someone to save you. You're the one that has to save yourself. So a lot of us are waiting for someone to come and save us out of what's happening. And I'm like, no, no, you have to not comply. You have to vote with your dollars. You know, we can't fight forever. We've been fighting for a year and a half, two years now. And it's like when you're fighting actually for freedom, that means you're not free. So we tell people, yes, hold people accountable that did injustices like we're you know, we're in court for defamation with the, the Canadian Association of Nurses and News Outlet NBC. We're fighting against the College of Nurses. We are reopening our cases for the unions that didn't represent us well. We're going to try to go against the employer. We're actually trying to hold the prime minister accountable for putting up the emergency acts when they had no rights to. So that kind of like fighting, yes. But I think it's time to stop doing that and start creating. And everybody has something that they can give to this new paradigm. And I always tell people, don't wait for someone else. You are the one. You do it. So I think that's my main message. But if people can find us. Please go to our website and see our new directory, whether you're a member of the public or a nurse, that's where it's being created. It's at canadianfrontlinenurses.c. And also, if you're interested in my mental health initiative, it's at lightingupdarkcorners.com. And Canadian Frontline Nurses is on every, every like the main platforms that we're not supposed to be on that we're supposed to <laughs> boycott that I just told, told you to boycott. <laughs> we're still on those because that's where people are. Yeah, it's um, where people and are. And you can find sure. me there too under my name. Uh, yeah, I think that that's pretty much it. Canadianfrontlinenurses.ca. Mm -hmm. Yes. So go, go look them up and go add yourself to the directory or, or join as a member of the public too, because I think there is like a, a real power in nurses supporting nurses too. And, you know, like we don't have to have it all figured out. If you're a few steps ahead, you know, then you can lead. And, and I think, you know, that's where people like yourself and myself, you know, who have taken, taken risks and who have expanded into something that feels more aligned. And, and we can look to some nurses who are looking to get out and who are feeling ready and just, you know, it's like, I'm not going to answer all the questions for you. I'm not gonna be able to do it for you, but I'll be here right beside you. And like, I'll, you know, I'll help you and support you in every way that I can. So whether it's for your mental health, you know, you're looking to get out, there is resources there. You're not hopeless. This is not a helpless situation. If you want to take back your life, like this is, this is the time, like this is the time. And I feel you on like the, you know, we can fight, we can only the fight is important, but if you put all your energy into fighting, you're kind of feeding the, the, the toxicity. And so it's like, there, there has to be a balance of like, I'll give some of my energy to the fight, but, but more so I'm going to put my energy into aligning my life and I'm going to put my energy into creating what feels, feels right for me. And that fills me up. So I'm just so grateful for this conversation and for having you on. And, and I, I'm again, encouraging everyone to go check out the Canadian frontline nurses and, and Sarah's program lighting up dark corner. Thank you again so much, Sarah. Thank you so much. 
I personally want to thank you for taking your time to listen to this podcast. It is my truest honor to sit with these nurses and witness them tell parts of their story. We as human beings have a deep need to be seen and heard, and this is my way of helping nurses in particular find their voice. Please know that the opinions shared in this podcast are those of the individual sharing them and not a reflection of any employer or regulatory body. We are sharing our truth, and that may not always resonate with you, but I'm guessing if you're listening, that something has rung true for you in this podcast. Our stories offer healing and create connection, two things that we as nurses need as we navigate the jungle of a healthcare career. So thank you for being witness. And if you feel inclined to reach out to the guest on today's episode to offer validation and appreciation, you can always find their contact in the show notes, as well as other links to the offerings of Sandra Payne Wellness. If you'd like to be a part of the community, join our private Facebook group, Surviving Nursing. And if you'd like to share your story on the End the Silence podcast, be sure to reach out. When we can come out of the shadows and into our light, we can create the change that is needed. And when we do this work together, we are so much stronger. Thank you for listening.